So. So how do you feel about your vote for Barack Obama? Has he fulfilled your fondest wishes? Uh, y you know, be the healthcare thing was pretty impressive, but I, uh, because events in my personal life have been have been uh, pretty bumpy, um, I I've not I've not been I've not followed the his presidency uh, as closely as I might have ordinarily. Why is he? I know a lot of there's a lot of disaffected Obama supporters, but what did they expect? The day he was elected, I'll never forget. Oh, I'm in Century City, which was like ground zero for Obama celebrations in LA. Yeah, yeah. And he and I remember he. I was walking by this one woman, and as I as I walked by, I heard her say, "I can't believe it! Finally, the war in Iraq is over." And I, <laughs> and I was just like, "Good God!" You know, the, the the expectations that people had were so so inflated and so absurd. Um, that a certain amount of dis disaffection was inevitable. Um, but no, I, I don't feel particularly su surprised or upset or betrayed by anything that Obama has done. Helps if you haven't paid any attention. And especially <laughs> if you just don't pay any attention. No, I, ca I, catch, I catch things here and there. I've ca caught the McChrystal stuff and what's going on you know, in Afghanistan. And, and um, I, yeah, I catch a few things. So do you think any Jewish website news and views, do you think that can make it on the internet and be self-sustaining? I mean, you, you started out Juicy and... Uh, it didn't work, it didn't pan out. Yeah. Um, I think Juicy could have made it. Um, it's it's, it's going to be a really... I mean, Juicy kind of did make it, but then we fucked it up. I mean, we got the venture capital, we, 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 we had all kinds of support, we had attention from the mainstream media almost even more than the Jewish community but for the Jewish community too I mean we we um but but then we we imploded um, I, I think it could happen but you it, it'd have to strike just just the right balance you know um, it's not easy to do because the majority of, of, of young American Jews are really not interested in centering their web life around a, a Jewish website. So you really have to, yeah. It's, it's it'll be it'll be very tricky. I thought we pulled it off briefly at Juicy, or we're getting there, but but um, I, I don't know. I still think it's possible, but I don't know if it's going to happen. Do you still want to be in the publishing business? Um, I don't know. I mean, my the 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 job I, I left before I went to India was was uh, not in publishing. I'm really not. I'm really not sure right now. I'm kind of. Um, I, I don't know. Publishing is not a great business these days, anyway. <laughs> um, if you've ever visited the LA Times, it's like a tomb in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So few employees compared it, to four years ago. Yeah. I I I remember the the like the day that I dropped out of medical school, deciding I was going to be a, a journalist at that time. Uh, ben Yagoda that same day published an article about just how miserable and hopeless it was trying trying to be a, 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 a freelance journalist. But uh, yeah, it's not a it's not a good time for that. So yeah. Do uh, you think you might go back to medical school? Yeah, I, I I've, I've considered it. Um, but I don't know. I'm in a very um, I'm going through a very strange time in my life. I I really. Don't know if I were to decide to go back to medical school right now, it'd be for the wrong reasons. Put it that way. So, so. so the Hasidic masters explained that the generation of the spies was loath to enter the land, as they feared the transition from the spiritual life they led in the desert, where they were sustained by bread from heaven, and all their physical needs were provided by miraculous means, and their sole occupation was the study of Torah and the service of God, to a life on the land and all the material entanglements this brings. It's, it's, sorry, read the beginning of it. The, the Hasidic masters explained that the generation of the spies was loath to land, enter the land of Canaan because in the desert, God gotcha. provided everything. Like God provided okay. their food, the drink, the, the dyed seven up with... Uh, right. What's, what's, with the antioxidants. With yeah. antioxidants. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like high protein, low carb. Yeah, totally. And yeah. so going, you know, there's this high protein, is. 
like the zone 40, 30, yeah, 30 bread, bread from heaven, yeah. and then having to go into the land of Canaan where where the bread was like 90% carbs. Right, <laughs> that's right. Absolutely, yeah. God, and honey, just processed, you know. I, I, I think, uh, that's not the explanation I've heard before. Before I've heard it was the slave mentality of, of the Jews. They were just, they were still, you know, they you'd taken this, you could take the slaves out of Egypt, but you couldn't take Egypt, you know, Egypt out of the slaves. Yeah. So, um, well, but then, so what was different with this later generation that, that they were, I mean, and this later generation didn't even have the advantage of, I mean, the ones who, who, who showed so little faith and, and didn't want to go into uh, Canaan uh, initially were the ones who had been at Mount Sinai. And now the second time, uh, you know, 40 years later, 38 years later, there's no one left who'd actually been at Mount Sinai, and yet this is the generation that, that despite having not had as, as dramatic a, a demonstration of God's existence, mm -hmm. um, they're the ones who, who, who show enough faith to, to go crashing into the promised land and smiting the little ones. So, How do you feel about the Torah commanding genocide? I just, I, I, I find it uh, intriguing all the time. As, as I was reading this, I was, I was you know, again, as, as he's discussing at one point where the, one of the groups they passed on, on the way to the promised land, that they smote uh, everyone, including the women and the little ones. Mm -hmm. You know, and then I read one of the commentaries that says that, um, uh, I guess, uh, Moshe, when he's in the course of his, 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 his whining, says at one point, you know, yeah, how can, okay, when it, it's the one we were saying before, how can I bear unaided? When he says, how can I, it's, it, the word is, I think, is, is Echa. And Echa only shows up in the Torah a few times, and it's always a, a cry of, it's a plaintive cry of how is it that, that, that we've come to this place. And, and the, the commentary said the reason he's saying that now, even though it appears to be a good time, is that it's, it's the, all the, the bitterness of the, of the suffering that's gone on so far, the death of innocent children, everything. And it especially spoke on, on innocent children and just that this was this psychic, this psychic fracture that existed in the hearts of the... Uh, of, of the Jewish people because of the suffering, how, you know, the, uh, how can good things happen to, the, how can bad things happen yeah. to innocent children? And then at the same time, in the same, in the same text, we're speaking matter-of-factly about killing other people's innocent children. Yes. Dashing, or, you know, as it said in one of the Psalms, dashing the heads of the little ones against rocks. I just, I, I don't know, I, I find it, um, I guess not surprising for a document of that time. Right, because this was how war was conducted that 3,000 is, right, years ago. They didn't. Right. But supposedly not all leaders did that. Look, the, the, the legend on Alexander was that he, uh, is that he was a, a gracious, right. you know, conqueror and, 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 you know, tended not to do things like this. Right. Um, but, you know, I, I guess I'd be interested in, in hearing Growing up in the Jewish community, I never heard these things engaged very aggressively. Going yeah. to Jewish day school, I never heard explanations for things like this. And I would have liked that because, um, you know, when, I, when you argue with anti-Semites or engage anti I mean, anti-Semites, which I really like to do, um, you know, they, they will, they're aware of all these verses and point them out. Um, so I have to have them teaching me about what's in the, in the, in the Bible. But, but um, you know, I, I would like to, you know, to, to, I mean, how do, how do we deal with, how do we deal with this in this, in this, things like this in our Holy Writ? Yeah, w one of the interesting things is that God never commands the Israelites to commit genocide against the Canaanites. God only says, expel them from the land, while it's Moses who constantly commits, commands genocide against the Canaanites. So... There's a, there's a big really? distinction between what God commands and what, what Moses commands. So I think Moses is very angry and perhaps speaking in a, in a hyperbolic way and perhaps he feels bad for his own failure to act at Baal Peor where the Israelites committed massive uh, fornication and then idolatry with the Midianite women. And Moses stood by passively and it was up to Pincus to, to act and to 
to drive a spear through the through the fornicating couple that would 